I'm going to quote Kubrat Pulev here. He said, quote, We have one heavyweight champion, Joshua, and he is too slow all the time to agree a date. We understand the world situation and everything, but I think we can fight this year and I prepare to do this. It does not matter where, which day, I'm ready, we are training, and I will wait for a date. December 5th is what we've heard, and I hear London is favorite to host. We think London because maybe he is scared and he wants to fight there. Normally, we can fight anywhere in the world, not only in London, but for me, it's no problem. I can fight anywhere. I'm ready, I'm hungry, and I know I am going to win. I can't train 100% right now because everything is not settled. But if the fight is fixed for December, I will start concentrating on this fight 1 million percent. In this world, there's a chance for anything to happen, but nobody can say for sure when this fight happens. But I think this fight will be this year. It's absolutely possible. For him, it will be a little bit different without his fans. This is a very manly sport. We can fight with the public or without the public. It does not matter. But maybe he needs the public. He is a very good boxer for sure, a world champion, and he has had a lot of good fights. But I see a lot of problems in his style and his boxing, and I think I can use every small opening and I can beat him. I do think he has a problem with psychology. I think the fight has the same ending as with Andy Ruiz. I know that I will surprise the whole world with this fight. I will show boxing fans across the world that Joshua will go down because he will be bringing war. End quote. So, interesting stuff from Kubrat Pulev. Now, I've made a video, or a few videos over the past few months, pointing out how a lot of heavyweights are now getting more brave with Anthony Joshua and more aggressive with him because of the Andy Ruiz loss. He showed a certain vulnerability and fighters have gained a lot of heart from that. And Kubrat Pulev is one of those fighters because Pulev was targeted by Anthony Joshua a number of times earlier on in Joshua's career and Pulev didn't want that smoke. I remember there was an incident where Eddie Hearn was over in Germany and he confronted Kubrat Pulev in the arena there and he tried to get him to agree verbally to the Joshua fight and Pulev wasn't on it. So Pulev's confidence after he lost to Vladimir Klitschko was shattered. And I'm not 100% sure that Pulev has ever really gotten over that defeat because it was a humiliating defeat. You have to understand that Kubrat Pulev believed a million percent in his heart that he was going to defeat Vladimir Klitschko. He felt like Klitschko was pretty much a coward and that he was too much of a man for Klitschko. Kubrat Pulev was, and probably still is, a huge celebrity in his home country of Bulgaria. And he had the whole country behind him. They all believed he was going to go in there and do a job on Klitschko. But it turned out to be a humiliating defeat for Kubrat Pulev, where he was dropped several times and he was knocked out in devastating fashion by a left hook. And subsequently, he changed trainers and he has been boxing far more defensively since that defeat. And there's no issue with that, of course. You have to improve. You have to correct your mistakes. But mentally, I don't think Kubrat Pulev was ever the same after that Vlad defeat. And I think that's the reason why he wasn't so keen on fighting Anthony Joshua prior to that Ruiz loss. But since that Ruiz loss, I've never seen Kubrat Pulev talk so confidently about beating AJ as he is right now. I mean, they were supposed to fight, remember? When uh, they were supposed to fight several times, but they were actually scheduled to fight. Pulev pulled out and Takam ended up stepping in. Some of you may remember that. But right now, Pulev is real confident that he can beat AJ. He's obviously strung a lot of wins together since that Vladimir Klitschko defeat. So he's built his confidence up as well as gaining more confidence specifically against AJ because of AJ's defeat against Ruiz. Will he make the mistake of being overconfident? against Anthony Joshua, because that's the mistake he made against Vladimir Klitschko. 
He looked at Klitschko as mentally vulnerable and weak. And he, you know, tried to be too aggressive early on and ended up getting clipped. It's a danger he could do that against AJ as well. AJ, you have to figure, is going to be more, you know, the, the, the memory of his knockout defeat to Andy Ruiz is going to be more raw in his mind than Pulev's defeat to Klitschko. And therefore, you have to imagine that AJ will be more conscious, conscious about not being so reckless. So it's going to be interesting to see how this fight plays out. But the things that Kubrat Pulev is saying, that AJ is scared of fighting abroad right now and he wants to fight in London, there might be some truth to that. Now, I don't want to say AJ is scared, but perhaps he's just more comfortable fighting in the UK at the moment from a mental point of view, from a psychological point of view. Maybe he wants to bring it back to where it all began, where he built himself up, where he built his confidence up, where he had his best wins, where he had the British crowd behind him. Maybe he needs to re-energize himself with that. Maybe that's why he wants to fight in the UK rather than fighting anywhere else, despite the fact that he could earn more money elsewhere. Or maybe some people buy into this idea that AJ really wants to give back to the British fans and bring boxing back to the UK for them because he's made plenty of money in his career, right? He doesn't, he's not necessarily going to miss the extra money that he may get fighting Kubrat Paul ever abroad. So maybe some people buy that reason that AJ just really wants to give back to his fans and give back to British boxing. Or maybe it's a, uh, the whole therapeutic usage exemption that some people factor into these situations. Because it is alleged by several people, including Dylan White, that Anthony Joshua has got a therapeutic usage exemption for testosterone in the UK by the British Boxing Board of Control. And maybe that's like, you know, in the, the uh, Disney movie Dumbo <laughs> back in the days, the magic feather that Dumbo had. And without this magic feather, he just didn't feel confident. Maybe, but maybe it's not even a magic feather. Maybe it has some real effect over his performances, his strength, his stamina, his, you know, what have you. And that's assuming he has a therapeutic usage exemption for testosterone. I don't know whether he does. I'm not saying he does. I don't want to get sued by AJ. I'm just putting out or repeating what the likes of Dylan White and Jerome Miller and, you know, some other people have said. And by the way, to my knowledge, AJ's never denied having a therapeutic usage usage exemption. And Dylan White, was it Dylan White or Miller? And we know Miller is a compulsive liar, okay? I'm well aware of that. But Dylan, Dylan White say that there are many fighters in the UK that have these therapeutic usage exemptions. So maybe that's a thing you know, going on where, where a lot of fighters have these exemptions and they get to take testosterone and stuff like that. I mean, I remember many years ago, this was in America, Lamont Peterson, he managed to get a doctor's note whereby he was injecting himself or being injected with testosterone. That to me is something that shouldn't be allowed in boxing. That you can go to the doctor and say, oh, my testosterone is low. Give me a shot. I don't think you should be able to do that as a professional boxer because naturally some men have higher testosterone levels than others, you know? And I think it's just, you know, that, that that's part of the reality of boxing. Some people are going to have longer arms. Some people are going to have better chins. Some people are going to be faster. Some people are going to be stronger. Some people are going to have denser bones right? Some people are going to have naturally better stamina, naturally better coordination. And some people are going to have higher testosterone. The argument is that once testosterone levels drop below a certain amount, it's actually lower than the average man. And therefore for an athlete, you know, th this is unusual. But from my own personal experience, when I was boxing, the, the training can be so intense 
and you can train yourself into the ground. You can overtrain. And when you overtrain, there are many different schools of thought and explanations as to why an overtrained fighter lacks energy. Some say it's adrenal burnout. Some say it's actually testosterone levels dipping and you can almost have your, uh, almost like a testosterone burnout where your body is struggling to keep up with the amount of testosterone your body requires for all the training you're doing. And basically you can have a, a period of burnout where your testosterone levels dip for, I don't know, several days, several weeks until you actually recover and then they come back up to normal levels or above normal levels. So again, that would be a training issue if that's what's happening to your testosterone levels because you're overtraining, yeah? So yeah, I, I, I'm against therapeutic usage exemptions when it comes to testosterone. I don't think that should be allowed in boxing, but that's my personal opinion. Again, just so I don't get sued by AJ or anybody, I'm not saying AJ does have that, but that is something that has been alleged, okay? So anyway, getting back to the main topic of this video, Kubrat Pulev can smell blood with Anthony Joshua right now. He senses that he's vulnerable physically, senses that he's vulnerable technically, and senses that he's vulnerable mentally, and therefore he's going into this fight with seemingly a lot of confidence. But will that backfire on him? Will AJ be better than Kubrat Pulev is anticipating? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I think this is going to be an interesting fight. And I do think that to win, AJ will have to take the ball by the horns. I think Kubrat Pulev is going to give Anthony Joshua problems in this fight. I think Kubrat Pulev's jab, the fact that he's very, very patient. Pulev is not a guy who's worried about, you know, landing loads and loads of shots. He's happy to stand in the middle of the ring with you and play chess with that very heavy, accurate jab that he's got. He's happy to do that round after round after round after round, confident that his work is better quality than your work and therefore the judges will favor him. He's confident in doing that. And so it's like a game of chicken. Whose nerve is going to break first? Are you going to get paranoid that maybe Pulev is up on the cards in these very tight rounds? Are you going to go for it? I think Anthony Joshua will have to go for it. I think it's too dangerous to allow the fight to go to the cards and it, for, it, for it to be a purely technical fight, even though AJ's the cash cow and all that. Kubrat Pulev does have ESPN behind him. He does have Bob Aaron behind him. So there is a fair amount of clout there, you know, depending on where the judges are from and obviously the sanctioning bodies, they have a lot of ties to the United States and what have you. So... Yeah, I think that at some stage, Anthony Joshua is going to have to take the bull by the horns and drag Kubrat Pulev into a dogfight where AJ does have the advantage when it comes to ability on the inside. He does. Kubrat Pulev really can't fight inside at all, so he doesn't try to. Kubrat Pulev's inside work is limited to holding with one hand and then rabbit punching with the other. That's about the entirety of Kubrat Pulev's inside game. Anthony Joshua, on the other hand, is vulnerable in the, on the inside, yes, but he's also very dangerous on the inside with the short shots, the hooks and the uppercuts, fast and explosive, yeah? Body punches, all that kind of stuff. So that's where I think AJ is going to have to take it at some stage to get the victory here. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about everything I've talked about in this video, about Kubrat Pulev's comments and his assessment of Anthony Joshua's ment mental state. Let me know, people. It's happening. I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, 
you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.